Art is an exciting topic, a three-letter word used to describe forms of expression, whatever that may be. Art has had many different movements throughout the years. Each movement in art represented different things that were happening throughout certain periods. Art is a means of expression, and artists throughout history were doing just that. Works depict what was happening historically as well as the modernity of everyday life that people were experiencing. At one point in history, art was only considered good or valuable if it was approved by the salons and academies, but throughout the years, the salons slowly lost its power and the patrons and artists became more powerful. In 1863, the Salon de Refusé was an exhibit that undermined the salons by displaying works that had been rejected. This prompted artists to organize their own exhibitions, most notably the Impressionists. Their first exhibit took place in 1874. That was the first of eight. This, these exhibits sparked the movement called the Impressionist Movement. The Impressionists were a group of artists who joined each other in going against the salons from which they had all been rejected. As a way to retaliate against the old systems in place, they decided to create their own exhibit, which displayed their works that were once rejected. Their work had had a focus on modern life, a transitory moment, sometimes depicting people as well as nature and time. The Impressionists had a focus on color and how it changes in the moment, or how layering the paint could create dimension. Their work often displayed loose brush strokes made up of lines which you can often determine what the medium being used was. I visited the Norton Simon Museum in Pasadena where there is an abundance of works from the 19th and 20th century. After looking at the works, I decided I wanted to focus on two works by artists that were part of the Impressionists. One work is by Edgar Degas, titled Little Dancer, aged 14 years. It was modeled in 1878 to 1871 or 81, cast after 1936, and the second is by Camille Pizarro titled Landscape with Flock of Sheep, and that was painted between 1889 and 1892. Edgar Dago was born in Paris, France in 1834 and was the eldest of five children. He had begun painting seriously and had even turned a room in the home into a studio by the time he was 18. He was expected to become a lawyer and he began attending school, but he had little interest in the subject. He later met Jean-Augustin Dominique Ingres, who urged him to attend art school. He was accepted and attended École des Beaux Arts. He practiced by copying the work of past great artists to perfect his skill. Dega has work, uh, had works that had been accepted by the Salon in 1860s, but soon after joined the Impressionists as he didn't like the rigid rules and judgments of the Salon. Degas was known for showing Parisian life. He explored the use of color, light, and composition in his works. He painted, sculpted, and created drawings from pastels, all while using the Impressionist effects of line, light, and color. As I said earlier, they were known for having animated brushstrokes and focused on the changing colors in light. Dega didn't only focus on the upper middle class, he also depicted marginalized individuals as well. Some of the subject matter that he heavily focused on in his work were dancers, more specifically ballet dancers. The work I want to talk about in, is his sculpture titled Little Dancer, aged 14 years. The wax model of this work was displayed in the Sixth Impressionist Exhibition in 1881. The sculpture introduced a new concept of sculpture, and although the sculpture had become one of his most popular works, at the time that it was displayed, there were many mixed reactions. Some critics felt that it was ugly and appalling, while others thought it was beautiful and blossoming. The sculpture shows a little dancer standing with her hands behind her back, and her right leg is out in a relaxed position with her chin pointed upward. This sculpture is at the Norton Simon Museum, was cast from the original after Degas' death, which was found among his belongings along with other works that had not been displayed or cast. The sculpture is textured. Degas did not smooth out all of the imperfections from the media, which I feel adds to the beauty of this work. When viewing it on display, it's situated in a light-controlled room, and the way the controlled light accentuates the texture and line of the work is beautiful, as well as the brass color. This sculpture is cast in bronze, and dressed with a gauzy skirt that is deteriorating. I think that adds to the beauty because of the fragility of the material. And in her hair, there is a satin ribbon. When I look at this work, I enjoy the fact that you can feel the attitude and confidence of the dancer. There's a sense that she's relaxed, but also grounded in her stance. Dega did a great job of capturing this moment. Although it was controversial at the time, it has become one of his most recognized works. 
I will now be moving on to Camille Pizarro and his painting, The Landscape with Flock of Sheep. Camille Pizarro was born in Amelie St. Thomas and lived there until he was 12 years old. He then attended boarding school in Paris. After that, he traveled around and then back to St. Thomas, where he would draw in his free time. In 1855, Pizarro returned to Paris to attend school at various institutions and studied under many masters, including Jean-Baptiste Camille, Corot, Gustave Courbet, Charles-Francois Dabnik. After honing his skill, he became known as the father of Impressionism and painted urban and rural French life. In his later works, he was known to depict peasant life as well as laborers. This showed his radical left-wing politics as he stood in solidarity with the rural working classes. The painting landscape with a flock of sheep depicts that. It shows a sheep herder in the middle of an energetically painted field herding his sheep. The painting is thickly painted with a beautiful blending of colors as they are layered to add depth, dimension, and color variation. The way the paint is layered on the work creates a sense of moment and the sky looks as if it's visually lowering. If you look at the painting closely, it looks as if little dabs or various, variously colored paint is layered to create movement in the image. If you were to zoom in on an area of the work, it would be difficult to tell what you may be looking at. But as a whole, the painting creates a sense of movement in the moment. The herder is gathering his flock. When looking at the sky, it's beautiful. The colors and texture are used to create an activated sky while creating different effects with the lighting is the main reason that I chose this work. When we think about the sky, we usually think of blues, whites, but what I love about the Impressionists is that they made a point of accentuating the various colors that make up one overall color. If you look closely, you can see some pinks, some cream colors, yellows, grays, blues, and all of them are layered in a strategic way to create a moving sky. This work was painted during a time that Pissarro was exploring Neo-Impressionism, which was also known as Scientific Impressionism. It focused on color harmonies, color theory, as well as using form of pointillism to create the image by layering different colors and it completes the whole image. Although he's not fully recognized for being the founder or primary practitioner of the Impressionist, Pizarro was the main developer of the Impressionist technique.